About less than 50 days until Election Day. Donald Trump is gaining steam, not only in the polls, but also on the electoral map. Joining us right now is the director of the University of Virginia Center for Politics, Larry Sabato. Larry, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. So your latest crystal ball electoral map predicts a surge uh, in favor of, of Donald Trump. We're, we've got the electoral map in front of us. Tell us which states are really critical and where the toss-up is, Larry. All right. Uh, essentially, Trump has surged in two key swing states, Ohio and Iowa. He's well up in Iowa. That seems to be his very best swing state. Uh, we're leaning Ohio to him because in the last three polls, good polls taken in Ohio, he has been up. And again, I think the population in Iowa, the voting population, is uh, well suited to Trump's message. The important part of this map is not just those two states. It's the fact that we've downgraded from Hillary Clinton several other states that are critical. Florida, North Carolina, Nevada, they're now all toss-ups. Those are opportunities for Trump if he can continue the momentum he's had during the two worst weeks of Hillary Clinton's general election campaign. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I mean, I know that Florida was really, really close. Now, now we know that Trump is winning in Florida. And North Carolina was, was a real toss-up as well. Where do you think Hillary Clinton really retains the edge? I mean, you've got leaning Democrats uh, in places like Pennsylvania, Virginia. Where does she have the real edge? I think she's uh, pretty solid in Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia as well, Colorado, uh, certainly the Northeast, the usual blue states there. But I think the Trump forces had hoped to win uh, Michigan and Wisconsin. At this point, I don't see a lot of movement. There's been some movement in Michigan uh, toward Trump, but Clinton is still up. What about Missouri? Let's talk about Missouri because this all of a sudden has shifted from likely Republican to safely Republican. Why is that significant? Well, you know, Missouri has been getting more and more conservative. When I was growing up, Missouri was the ultimate toss-up state, and everybody kind of looked to Missouri to foretell the election result. That's long over. Uh, now, Obama almost won it in 2008, incredibly, but that was an election with very peculiar circumstances. So I think it's over in Missouri. It's over in Missouri. Wow. What about Nevada? Let's talk Nevada for a second, because that was another area where there was a big expectation that Trump could take it. Yeah, here the key is the Hispanic vote, how large it is. Obviously, it's going to be overwhelmingly for Clinton, but how many come out to vote? Uh, there hasn't been the kind of excitement that Clinton had hoped for in a wide variety of communities, I would say millennials even more than Hispanics. That's where she's having a real problem. Wow, and she's trying to reach out to the millennials, by the way, today. Let's, let's change the map, or, or what does the map look like when you add in the third party candidates? When you've got Gary Johnson and Jill Stein in the mix, does that help or hurt the nominees? I think if you combine the two, it's actually taking a point or two away from Hillary Clinton, which probably surprises people. We assume that libertarians hurt Republicans more than Democrats, but it isn't always true, especially when a libertarian gets up to the 10 percent level, which is essentially where Gary Johnson is. Stein is at, you know, two, three, four percent. Uh, let's remember the odds are, since neither of these candidates will be in the debates, that their numbers will fall as we approach November 8th. You know, the last time you came on the show, you were pretty adamant that Hillary Clinton will likely be the next president. Are you still feeling that? I think she's still the favorite. She has more paths to 270 than Donald Trump does. But I'm not eliminating the paths that Donald Trump has. He does have paths to 270. It's barely 270, a little over 270. She has passed beyond 270, and that's really the difference. And so when you look at the most important states in terms of narrowing that gap, what are they? Well, if a Trump is going to break through, He's got to win one of those big states where she's currently doing well, whether it's Michigan or whether it's Pennsylvania, and he certainly has to sweep the toss-ups. That's the key in the swing states, win those toss-ups. He's got to thread the eye of the needle in all of them. She doesn't need all of them. Yeah. He's been spending a lot of time in Pennsylvania. Has it resonated? 
So far, no. So far, we've seen among the blue states in that region, in the Rust Belt region, Clinton's largest lead is in Pennsylvania. Now, mm. that's today. Right. I'm, you know, we've seen changes all through the election campaign, and, and we haven't had the first debate. You know, the debate could reset the game. We'll have to see Monday. Yeah, it's all about the debate right now. Larry, good to talk with you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maria. Larry Sabato joining us there. Coming